Well, first DIY here in the new garage, and it's fitting that it's snowing outside right now, so it is nice to be in here covered up. I'm gonna be doing an oil change on Katie's FRS. Now, if you're following along, this is the exact same process on the FRS, BRZ, and GT86. Same car, same engine, so you can follow this exact same procedure. I'm gonna go over all the tools and the parts that you need for this, and I'm gonna show you step-by-step, -step, very detailed, how to change the oil. It's one of the most basic maintenance things that you're gonna do, and even if you've never worked on a car before, for. I believe in you, I think that you can do this one, so let's do it. Before I get started, I like to have all of my tools and supplies ready to go. For this car, we need 6 quarts of full synthetic 0W20 oil and an oil filter. We also need a floor jack, jack stands, 14mm wrench, torque wrench, oil filter wrench, rubber gloves, a funnel, and a bucket to drain the old oil into. If it's cold outside, I recommend going for a quick drive around the block to warm up the engine. Warming up the oil will help it drain more quickly and thoroughly and it will make it a lot easier to remove the oil filter. Step 1 is jacking up the car. Because our FRS is lowered, I pull it onto some scrap wood so I can get my floor jack underneath it. Locate the front jacking point. It's in the center of the car about 2 feet behind the front bumper. Once you've got the car high enough, use your jack stands to support it. I like to lower the car onto the jack stand so that they're fully supporting the weight and then lock the jack. That way there are three support points. It might be overkill, but that's how I do it. So I really like this style of oil drain pan. It's kind of like a giant bottle where all the oil will just collect here in the top of it and then it's got a cap on it. So you can take this whole thing to the store to recycle your old oil. They'll dump it out for you and then just hand you this back and it's all ready to go for your next oil change. So if you don't already have one of these, I will link one of these down below. Put on your rubber gloves and loosen the 14 millimeter drain plug. So just one quick note here if you're going to use this style of oil drain pan is just make sure that you open this little um, air cap here on the side that way as the oil is draining in here, air can escape through there. Um, there was one time that I forgot to do that and the oil just poured all over the side so just make sure you open that up. The FRS drain plug is really short so have your drain pan in position and be ready for a stream of oil. While the oil is draining, it's time to remove the filter. So to get the old oil filter off, I like to use an oil filter wrench. Now you don't have to use one of these, but just over the years I found that this makes my life so much easier. Um, maybe you have like some crazy gorilla grip and you can just grip it and rip it. Um, but me, I kind of have like wet noodle grip, so this thing comes in handy. I will link one of these down below if you don't have one, but basically it's just like a rubber belt. As you put it on, it puts some tension on it, then you can just twist it right off. So that's what I like to use. Before putting in the new filter, I'll clean out the inside to make sure that we get a good seal. Then rub some fresh oil onto this rubber gasket. I tighten it as much as I can by hand and then do a quarter turn with the wrench. So the next step before we can put the new oil in is you have to fish out your drain plug out of your oil bucket and uh, there's a little crush washer on here that we have to replace. Then just grab your torque wrench with a 14 millimeter socket and we're going to torque this down to 28.9 pound feet. Now it's super important to use one of these. Um, basically this allows you to get the precise tightness on that bolt um, too loose and it could possibly come undone and leak oil too tight and you could damage the threads and it'll be a nightmare the next time that you go to pull it out but with a torque wrench you're getting the exact uh, torque specification on that bolt. So 
So the oil capacity of the FRS, BRZ, and GT86 is 5.7 quarts of 0W20 full synthetic. So that's why we got the five quart bottle and also one single quart. So what I like to do is I'll pour in the first five quarts all at once. And then before I start on this second bottle, I'll gradually check the oil level with the dipstick. Basically, you don't want to overfill the oil. So as you're pouring this one in, since we're not going to be using the whole bottle, I just want to do this one really slowly and check the level as I'm going along. So that's it for the oil change. The links to every product that you're gonna need for this, whether it's tools or supplies, will be down in the description. They are Amazon links, so I do get a small kickback from that, which I really appreciate. Um, even if it's something like you're buying your wrench or something through my link where I'm only getting a few cents, it does add up and it does really mean a lot to me. But that's it for that. Uh, well, what do you think? First DIY here in the new garage. Uh, first FRS video in a long time. I was actually just talking to my friend about that the other day that, um, Sometimes I forget that we even have this car because it's Katie's daily driver, so uh, she's always got it at work all day, but she recently just switched back to her Dodge Avenger, which is like her winter car. So now I've got access to both this and the BMW all day, every day if I wanna make videos. So if you guys wanna see more videos on this or you have ideas for mods or things that we can do, I'll leave a comment and I'll be interested in seeing those. level with the dipstick and then that will tell me where I'm going to go. So I want to give you guys a little behind the scenes here so you can see kind of what's involved with making these videos. <laughs> For a, a typical oil change, how long does it normally take you guys? Like 15, 20 minutes? For me to film this took just over five hours. Um, there's a lot involved in trying to film it the way that I like to film it. But uh, anyway, I have these two softbox lights. They're not the best lights, but they do get the job done. I think they're like 70 bucks for both of them. And uh, they do work, not the brightest, but they're okay. Um, for the microphone, I've got the Rode Video Micro on a boom pole here. So if you're wondering how I'm able to get the audio so crisp, even inside the garage, basically. Uh, so let's say the camera's all the way over here and I have the mic like right up to my mouth as I'm talking on just out of the frame. So it really picks up my voice without picking up too much echo. Speaking of the camera, recently switched from Sony to the Canon EOS R and I just love it so far. This is the YouTuber's dream camera. It really does everything. And my favorite part on this, one of the main reasons that I got it actually is this flip out screen. So not only can you see yourself as you're filming, but you can also touch the screen and change any of your exposure settings. Let's say I'm underexposed and I need to bring it up. I can do all of that just from the screen. I don't have to touch any of the buttons on the camera. And I just love that. And on top of that, it's full frame. So everything looks nice and crispy. Um, as far as heating, I don't have an actual heater here in the garage yet. We're looking into maybe like a natural gas heater or something, but I picked this up this morning. It's just a little electric space heater. And uh, not the best, but I will say that it is probably 15 or 20 degrees warmer in here than it is outside. Uh, not warm enough quite to wear a t-shirt, but um, it is comfortable to work in. But anyway, that's been it for the garage. Uh, me and my dad are gonna start this project pretty soon, but for right now, I'm just making do with what I have.